Sparks Medicine Podcast with Simba. We're sparking positive change in the community. Having real conversations and therapy. And you know the laughter's the best remedy. Got that heavy dose of humor for your hearts to heal. With mental health, it can't get any more real, yeah. Best Medicine Podcast. Laugh, love, learn. Best Medicine Podcast. Best Med Pod. It's your man Simba Roar back in this thing thing one more time, bruh. And today, I have a special guest. If you listen to the diagnosis, you know that all I have is special guests. And today is no different. Today, you know, this podcast is about mental health. It's about physical health as well. And today I have a family physician here to talk about getting healthy. Also, about motivating the youth and the elders to fuck this job. Today, I introduce you to Dr. Erica Jones. Hi, Simba. It's such a pleasure to be speaking with you today. I'm really excited about the podcast that you got going, and I I can't wait to share with uh, you and your listeners. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. We actually connected on Instagram. Um, I got a notification and said, fuck this job, follows you. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so I delved into the, to the, to the page, to the account, and I just saw the work that was happening there. And I, I like I told her off mic, I said, this is, this is a mantra that I used to live by. It was fuck this job because this job isn't necessarily for you. You can create a job for you so that you can actually feed other families and feed people instead of looking to have somebody feed you. Yes. It's very important yes. to me that the work that I'm doing, I'm able to feed people and not necessarily not necessarily saying that you know i'm i'm the almighty but it just feels good to be able to uh make other people self sufficient so it really does yeah so thank you for being here once again i i really appreciate it oh, it's my pleasure so tell the tell my millions of fans um who you are, what you do, what your purpose is. I am Dr. Erica Jones. You can find me on at D-R-E-R-I-C-A-J-O-N-E-S. I'm a board-certified family medicine physician. And the reason why I went into family medicine is because these are the types of doctors that literally can do anything. I didn't really fall in love with one particular specialty when I was going through my training and then I started seeing what family medicine doctors were doing and it's like these people are all over the place some of them are you know working in the ERs other ones are doing Botox injections other ones are doing you know workplace physicals the field is just so massive that I didn't want to limit myself and I knew that America needed primary care physicians particularly the black community like we need primary care physicians right. assistance so that's you know one of the reasons why I went into the field that I went into and after so what that means is I went through four years of undergrad then I went through four years of medical school. Mm. When I finished medical school at Meharry Medical College, made in Meharry, that's in Nashville, Tennessee. It's a historically black college and university that produces a lot of the nation's uh, brown doctors and dentists yeah. and PhDs. So, you know, I um, I 
finished at Meharry, and then I went on three more years to work on residency. So family medicine residency is three years. And while I was doing it, I just made sure that I tried to keep my mind open to different options because no one in my family had done medicine before outside of a cousin who um, was doing nursing at one point. So everything was new to me, you know, and I basically, I'm still kind of just meandering my way and just making my, making my way. And life has been great. Y'all, if you didn't, if you're bad at math, y'all, this woman just told me that she was in school from kindergarten to 12th grade and then, and then did another 12 years. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> it has definitely been a long path. And the learning never stops. Um, right. No matter what you do, if you're not interested in medicine, whatever it is that you're interested in, it's important to realize that even after you get all of these certificates, after you, you know, pay for all these student loans, the learning never stops. Yes. We still, as physicians, have to go through continuing medical education courses. Um, it, it just, you have to, in order to succeed in life, you have to have a mind frame of progression and of continued learning. Like, that has to be the goal. It has to be. Um, yeah, I work at a middle school, and the kids are in that mind state of, oh, we're never going to use this. And a lot of it, a lot of it, I was like, I agree with them. I'm like, yeah, you're never gonna know, need to know how to draw this graph and triangulate the quadratic equation of the whatever. <laughs> but it's a, it's not about that. It's about um, having the persistence to do the work. It's not about actually what the work is. It's about are you willing to focus? Can you focus and get this work done? So that's, that's, you said a word right there when you said focus. Right. And focus, is, what some people don't realize is that focus is something that has to be fine-tuned. Yes. So as you said, when you start off in those earlier years, you're learning how to focus on someone speaking or yes. how to focus on someone who's writing. And then you learn how you learn through those childhood educational experiences. That's how, when you learn how you learn. Yes. And there are some adults who still don't know how they take in information in the most optimal fashion. They don't know what time they take in information at the most optimal time. Right. But we all have that. So I, I encourage everybody to learn that about themselves. Learn how you operate. Yes. How do you learn? Yeah, learn how you learn how you learn. <laughs> yeah, that's real. Um, because I have I'm I'm a teacher's assistant for the special education um, students, so uh-huh. it's not nece- it's not necessarily the handicapped students, but just with learning disabilities. Or uh, I have a lot of Hispanic students, so ELD students and um, English as a second language students. So, uh-huh. um. On their on their charts and things, it tells you, oh, they have, um, they basically this this person might need uh, a visual of how you're of what you're uh, teaching. This person might need you to say it to them. So uh-huh. they've taken they've taken the children have taken tests to see how they learn, but they don't really know how they learn. The per, the people helping them. Uh, knows how they learn. So for me, I know like one girl, She she's very visual. So if we're doing a math problem, I'll break it down. I'm like, 3x, you know, it, it's, it's three people here. It's three people here. Me, you, and this person. If you, you know, how many, how many, like if it's 3x equals 15, if it's three people, how many people does each how many how much does each person have how many fingers do you have five yeah okay so if i have five you have five and she has five how many is that 15 
Okay. Cool. So, if we all have, if we, if the total is fifteen, we all have five fingers. What's what's three divided by fifteen? Five. And she gets it like that. I I really just want my goal has just been to help. I don't have to. I don't. I've been trying to step back on doing and been more intent. Intentional about assisting. I see. I see. Uh, um, I used to write. Uh, I used to write poetry, or I kind of still do. But I had a um, had a line that says, "I'm a hero with a sidekick prowess here to save the town." And that, and that, when I wrote it, I meant that you know I'm saving the day, but my goal also is to assist you save yourself. Yes. And by doing that, we can save the world. Yes. I love it. I love it. I'm a writer as well. I started off just writing in little blank books that my mom would buy for me. Yeah. And literally, I wrote my first book. I want to say I might have been eight or something like that. Oh, wow. When I wrote my first book. And it's, she still has it somewhere. It was called, like, the Magic Mushroom. Or, Hi. My mom really... <laughs> that sounds like my last night. <laughs> yeah, man, a lot of... We're learning about a lot of therapeutic properties that a lot, a lot of things are having. Yeah. Um, for us, and, you know, we can definitely get into that um, in another another episode. Yes, please. Um, but we're, we're learning a lot about nature and... And things like that. And my mom just kind of, she, she gave me a, a blank canvas. <clears throat> and I love her for it. I appreciate her. So I've been writing ever since. I used to go to oratorical contests and writing contests. And out of that, she didn't know that she was grooming a physician. Or maybe she did. But she knew, she knew that I had something special. Right. Entering those oratorical contests and really focusing on expressing myself through writing became so valuable in my career. Like I was able to secure scholarships for college. Yes. I was able to secure, you know, um, residency spots, spots in med schools. All of these things require writing skills. Yes. Just, just, just from your skills, just from your, your God given abilities. Yes. All that yes. came from just what you have honed over the past years. Yes. So now, um, what I've really learned to do over the years is take care of myself so that I can take care of people. Yes. And a part of me taking care of myself means writing and getting my emotions out and sharing what I think is important with other people. Definitely. So writing has been a great conduit for that. I've written three books. I have an author page on Amazon. Um, and you, you go to my site, DrEricaJones.com. You'll see you know, pretty much some of the things that I've been doing. And you'll see the links to my blog and the links to my books. But in particular, uh, my last book is very special to me because I feel like I, I was struggling for freedom. Hmm. I was really struggling for freedom, and I said, fuck this job, after just, you know, really preparing myself financially, spiritually, even, you know, with my health, just trying to make sure I was in the utmost of health, knowing that I wasn't going to have a job, you know, I think that these are things that you have to think about when you're preparing to transition through different phases in life. You have to always think about your wellness and, and what's going against that and what's harming you so that you can move forward. That's very true. That's very true because if you would have said, fuck this job, and then gotten sick, Lord knows how you would have had to handle that. Right. I just, you know, I thank God that, you know, everything is, is really worked out for me. Do you, what was, talk about your books, talk about your books. So this is the third book. Fuck This Job is your third book. Mm -hmm. What are your other two and when were they written? 
So the first book that I published, I self-published. Um, I wrote it when I was in my first year of residency. Mm-hmm. It was really, really therapeutic for me. Towards the end of med school, so it was around match, around match time, somebody that was near and dear to me, my cousin Chastity, she got a diagnosis of cancer. So it talks about you know her story and. It ended up being a terminal cancer. We ended up losing her. So there's seven chapters. It's called Jewels of Joy. And in these seven Mm. chapters, I talk about the seven jewels that I learned from her life. Beautiful. I think during that time, I was was dealing with a lot of emotions because this is one of the people who I just held to such a high esteem. We would be anywhere. Like, we could be in a club, and this girl is talking about, you know, Jesus. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? So this is... I just always felt like she was such a perfect person, and I couldn't understand at the time, you know, why she had to just go, you know. It was her time, but uh, I had trouble dealing with it, and residency is challenging alone, and then still kind of dealing with those feelings of, you know, losing her. It was a lot, you know. You didn't lose her. Yeah, you didn't you're right. like they say. They say you don't lose people; you gain angels. You're right. So, you're right. with that residency being so difficult, her transitioning was to help you get through it. I just she probably would have been. It was tough. Yeah, I'm sure it always I is. Mean, it always is. Um, today, <laughs> today is the 16th of November. Uh, four years ago, three years ago, I lost my grandmother. Um, she was the woman that raised me. So today is, um, a raw day for me. Um, that's why I said just, I just wanted to work today. I just wanted to, to have a conversation. Um, not, not even to keep my mind occupied, but more so to remember her because she was always going, 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 going. So for me to be the way that I'm acknowledging her in this moment is by is by working is by doing this job because this isn't this isn't a job for me this is a this is a this is a lifestyle for me. Wow. The best medicine podcast is 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 a lifestyle. We are all the best medicine. We can all help each other heal. Wow. Yes, I, I totally agree. We are each other's medicine. We really are, and I wish more people would realize that. They say laughter is, you know, one of the greatest forms of medicine. Mm -hmm. What about love? Mm -hmm. Yes. What about love and just showing love? When you're busy, when you're sad, when you're down, when you're happy. Yeah. Love is medicine. Right. Have you seen the movie Selma? I don't think I've seen Selma. Okay. Um, and towards the beginning of the movie, uh, MLK was having a rough time and he had a he had a, he was having a rough evening. Mm-hmm. And he he was stressed out, he sat down or maybe he yeah, he sat down it was late at night and he got on the phone, made a phone call. It was a woman on the other end that picked up and he asked her, he said, um, uh, I don't know, I, I can't, I'm a butcher it, but he basically said, um, sing me a smile, or, yeah, sing me a smile, or something like that, and she started singing to him, Precious Lord. and it was Mahalia Jackson, yeah, I heard that story before, yeah. yeah, and that was just so important to me, because I have those people in my life, I have those people that I can call, and just, you know, say, Ask them to sing to me, and they will, and I'll just pass out. I'll just fall asleep. Wow. Because you feel wow. sometimes, sometimes when, sometimes, especially for me, I'm, I fight so hard for four people, uh-huh. and then by the end of the night, I'm just worn out, and all I need is just a little bit of peace to get me through the night. So it's important that we have those people in which we can call on um, when 
it feels like there's nothing else. Yeah, healers need healing too. Yes, definitely. You see the big push now in a lot of the different, you know, healthcare industry, sec- like the different, the many sectors. It's, you know, wealth, wellness, and, and, and mindfulness. And people are really coming to grips with the fact that, hey, man, we might just be a little overworked. Huh. We might just be a little <laughs> sad. Right. And I think that it's something that needs to be explored. I think more research needs to be done in terms of how different workplaces are affecting people. Right. Um, How different positions are affecting people. I feel like we actually don't ever, like, think about that. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. And a lot of us are educators. And it's just funny to me because I've been I've been walking in a different purpose now, and the people who I've been aligning with are we all have the same purpose. We all have the same, you know, mind states, and you really you really attract who you are, and it's 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 beautiful to see. Definitely, um super excited that I got to come into your realm and especially share this day with you um, and just really kind of be here in this space. Yes, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, Second book. What was your second book? Uh, The second book is called 33. So when I turned 33, I actually got to a point where I didn't want to do a whole lot of fancy stuff for my birthday. Mm. You know, I I wanted to do something that meant something to me. Um, my I found that my life path number. One of my friends gave me, you know, the the tools to calculate your life path number, mm. and mine was the number three, or is the number yes. three. And um, so, thirty three was a big year for me, just spiritually. And I decided that I was going to get together my old poems and things like that. So I got together my old poems, a lot of my travel photos, and I put them in a book. It's called 33. So it's um, right now it's just um, in electronic format. Um, you can get it on your iPhone. You can get it on your Kindle. It's really short. It's just 33 poems and 33 photos that are near and dear to my heart. I got photos from South Africa, um, photos from Panama City Beach. It's a bunch of different poems that touch on things that are um, very important to me. I got a chance to go to uh, the Honorable Muhammad Ali's funeral. So I I wrote a a poem about that, and I really kind of took a lot of the energy from there, and I wrote a poem called I Am Ali. So that's in there. That's... um, you know, that's something that I continue to do. I write a lot of different things. So poetry is just one of those. Like, I'll put a four-liner in my notes on my iPhone and leave it there for years. <laughs> you never know <laughs> yeah. when the inspiration going to strike to finish it. Yeah, and that's one thing about a writer. Like, we'll write on anything. Yes. Anywhere. Yes. Most definitely. I'm sure that that is a moment that you're never going to forget. Just being able to to share that that home going. Yeah, I, I never will. Um, my, my grandmother couldn't even. My grandmother's ninety now, but at the time she couldn't even believe that I was there. Right, right, right. Because she was watch. She watched him. Yeah. For for the people who don't know numerology, what does the three represent? So, from my limited knowledge, and once again, I'm like a numerologist or anything of the sorts. I just know that like three is my life path number. Um, so, I'm not even going to start to to try to basically like explain. <laughs> I know it's about abundance. It's, 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 it's about okay. Abundance. I know. I know. I just wanted you to tell them. Yeah, I just, um, I just know it's about abundance and. 
and creativity. Yes, the the um, number three um, gives the vibration of uh, the number three as a person is the creative. Yeah, I just that those are really the the two main things that I know about it. I mean, people. I think my friend she sent me. I have another friend for my thirty third birthday. She literally sent me like five websites with all of the stuff on there. I was like, oh my gosh, like that's definitely not my specialty. What I don't know, I'm like, ah, yeah, I, yeah. So, from my limited knowledge, that's that's what I know about it. Really quick, I'll just give you one little sentence of the three. Three strive for creativity. Uh, three strive for creative expression on all art forms. So, like you said, you're a writer, you're a family physician. You all you're doing you do all these things because you're vibrationally supposed to create. Wow. So, thirty three was a super creative year for you. Yeah. Like, literally, my friend was, she was staying in an apartment, and they had a little rooftop. We just used what we had, and we did a whole poetry reading on this rooftop, and it ended up being, like, this super small, intimate high vibrational gathering like there might have been like 15 people there but everybody that was there they brought a bottle of wine they like we all had something to share with one another and a lot of us are still in contact to this day that's beautiful and it's those spaces that you need it's those spaces that we create and that we hold dear that mean so much to us definitely and my spaces are in people like I I care nothing about you know the location or where we are but it's like it's I I have a safe space in my friends yes just like you you have those people that you go to like we all need that and we have to build that and we have to constantly nurture that and nourish that space that's definitely true that's definitely true um, so now, now to your third book, fuck this job. Why? <laughs> Why? Why are you telling people to fuck their jobs? So I'm not telling people to just, you know, quit their jobs. The, the title is. Oh, yes, you are. Uh, yes, you are. F- Get the title. <laughs> F asterisk CK, this job, uh, the art of transition. And it basically is just motivating people to get their life together in terms of, you know, your finances, meet with the people you need to meet with, get your circle together and get your mind together in terms of where you actually want to go. Um, look at your skill set, figure out if you need to go and get another certification or something like that to be able to get the position that you want to get. You know, assess your friends and the people around you. Who are the people that are actually helping you? Who are the right. people that had a negative energy? So it's really just, it's, it's funny. You know, I meant for it to be a little funny. I like to get people to express emotions when they read my words. So it's funny and it's short. You know, it's not nothing that you're going to spend a whole day reading. Um, you can probably literally read the book and like maybe a couple of hours. Right, right, just right. depending on the kind of, and there's, you know, it's, pages in there so you can make notes and things of that nature but it's really meant to be fun it's meant to be motivational and it's really just trying to give you that little sometimes people need a little nudge you know and I think even physicians I wrote it about myself because people think that once you get to a certain educational level that you know you made it essentially but I wrote it about myself just to show people like I went through all of these years of schooling and to show other physicians like you don't have to be stuck you don't have to feel stuck right fuck it just say fuck it do something else yeah yeah (laughs) um have you i I think uh because they tell you they say that you you change careers what three times before you retire and i i think for you 
um, not knowing you, but I think for you, it's easier because you do so much, you know, creativity that you're in three different careers already. Wow. I mean, I never, I never thought about it like that. I just, um, I think that's just a, how how I was raised, like to be able to just know how to do certain things. Right. Like I came from a family of just people who were not scared to work and who weren't scared to, you know, go make some cakes or go, you know, clean up something for somebody, go clean up a house or go, you know, make some food or sell a plate you yeah. know what I mean you do what you gotta do to survive and, and it's not necessarily um, to get over on somebody but we use we use our talents we use our skills um, I saw you with a great example of that is I saw you with um, uh, Ziminade shout out to Ziminade shout out to Zimiron and I saw that he um, did a quick interview with you and that's really where I saw actually saw you. I heard about your your page, but when I actually saw you with him, um, I put you know two and two together. But he is someone oh, wow. who has taken lemons and made lemonade. Literally. And some it's some delicious. <laughs> Shout out to Zamaya, bro. Shout out to Z, man. He's he's the man, and it's about and he he he's another one who you know he's up every day making those lemonades, delivering those lemonades. Um, creating opportunities for other people to make money. He he sells. He also sells plates. He'll you know he'll cook for you and have give you a beverage at the same time. He has wow. a he has a um, mobile recording studio. So if you're an artist, he'll come to you and record. Yeah, shout man. Out. Shout out shout to Z, out. man. Like literally, I mean, I was just um, posted up at the lake, and I was so full that they. He had the mic and the speaker ready. Yep, yep. So it's really about just when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. Like, you know, and he's using what he has. Exactly, exactly. And making he's it work. He's using what he has and he's making it work. I was really full um, after meeting him. I think we, I don't even think my lemonade lasted 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, it's going. It's going quickly. Yeah, they're going quickly. You got to buy two or three of them. He yeah, Now now he's selling the gallons, so that's good. That's good. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely proud of him. That's, that's an amazing thing. Like, he, he's doing a lot. And I love to see it. And I think we all have to embrace and figure out what it is that we're good at. Yeah. We, we may not be good at everything, but we got to try at least. 100%. A hundred percent. We got to try. Um, I really just want to encourage everybody, you know, to just try. Try to take care of yourself. I talk a lot. Um, outside of me writing, you know, when I'm actually in the office and I'm meeting with patients, I talk to them about trying to stretch every morning before they get up and, you know, get into the day. Even if it's just for five minutes, just try. Mm-hmm. I, Try to drink a little water. Can Try I, to pay attention. Can I amend that a little bit? Yeah. Um. Not try. Do. Yeah. Do. Because, um. It's a it's a it's a matrix quote. Like, there is no try. It's either it's either do or don't. Oh wow. There is no try. Trying applies to failure. It's like no, we we're, we're gonna do because even if you fail when you're doing, it's not a failure because you can you can bounce back from it. And you can learn from and it. And then you can learn from it. And that failure, you learn from failure. Oh, I didn't do it right this time. Let me try to yeah. let me let me do it differently. Let me yeah. do it a different way. Can I tell you that I've learned so much from you just in this short time that we've been able to connect, and I'm I'm just very very thankful for you. I'm very thankful for the space that you've created and the platform that you've created. I definitely receive that. I definitely receive that. I would love to this to be a reoccurring thing (laughs) (laughs) because this episode would not do the justice that you know we can we can create. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. We'll see what your listeners have to say. You know, see 
see see what they want. Yeah, they they see what they want us to talk about. Yeah, they know what's up. They know the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> they know the vibes. Well, thank you so much for giving me your time. Um, is there anything that you want to discuss before we get out of here? I just really want to encourage people to take care of themselves. Take care of your body. It's the only one that you're going to get. Yes. Period. Take care of your mind. If you don't know how, ask somebody. Right. My website is D-R-E-R-I-C-A-J-O-N-E-S. Dot com. That's Dr. Erica Jones. Dot com. You can tweet me. You can find me on IG. That's at dr. Erica Jones. Dot com. That's no dot com. But those hmm. are my handles. The book uh, "Fuck This Job." If you go to fuckthisjob. Dot o r g. F u c k t h i s j o b. Dot o r g. You'll find everything. Yes. I just appreciate and you. And buy some merch, y'all. <laughs> buy some merch she has yeah. uh, tie-dye shirts she has the the the, the legendary black what is it black and gray or black and white black and white black People and white love the merch you yeah. definitely gonna get some attention with that she has a glow in the dark pastel t-shirt it's fire man get some get, get some merch man fuck this <laughs> get some fuck this job merch and wear it to your job yeah put it under your button down you know yeah just motivate just, yourself to, yes to build your stash up so you can move on so you can transition uh-huh so have it have it just on your heart at the at all times while you at work <laughs> definitely i appreciate it before we go i usually give my listeners something to think about for the week and this segment is called the diagnosis <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't have any, this is my favorite part of the whole show. I don't have any music for it, so I always just make, just make those sounds. It's my favorite part of the whole show. But this week's diagnosis is this. Number one, the learning never stops. So I don't care how long you've been in school. I don't, I don't care how long you've been on this earth. You will never stop learning. Um, I, before my grandmother passed in the year that my grandmother passed, um, you know, she was, she was raised, I think she was born in the thirties or the forties. So she was a sharecropper. So she went from sharecropping to 2010 ish. Like, so she's seen everything. She's had friends and family members just being, just taken from her and hung up on a tree somewhere. Like, she's seen, you know, segregation, civil rights, a black president. She's seen that, an orange president. She's seen it all. Um, And towards the ending of her life, she was taking these classes, um, these religious, these religious classes, and I was uh-huh. helping her with certain assignments. And we, we talked, and she, she, it was her way of apologizing. She said, um, you know, I may not I may not have done everything right, but all I, I did what I thought was best this whole time. And I understood that because coming from with that mind state, you're in survival mode. And she was trying to just make sure I was going to survive. And wow. she, she said something that was really poignant. She told me... Um, what I've learned from all this is that there's always another way. You don't have to be stuck in the way that you think is the best. That's a word. Yeah, definitely. So that, That's a word. Shout out to her, man. Um, number two, focus and do. So figure out what you want. Figure out what you need. Figure out what you will do and do it. Go full force. I, I have this I have this uh, this motto right now called F three, full force fall. Because, you know, the in, in this autumn, like we are we're ma- we're manifesting this vision and we're going full force at it. 
into the end yeah. of, until the end of the year. Full force fall. F three. Hashtag F three. So if I see y'all hashtag F three, then I know it's real. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And full the, force fall. Full force fall, man. Hashtag F three. Uh and the last one. Healers need healers too. We can't as a healer, we can't save the world by ourselves. We need to be able you know, doctors have doctors. <laughs> the doctor's yeah. not gonna work on itself. <laughs> he knows how, she knows how, but we need to be vulnerable and allow someone else um the grace to to have our back sometimes. I love it. Do you have one for the fans? For my listeners and supporters and friends? So my takeaway, one thing I never want you to forget is to always remember to take care of yourself first. Yes. The body is very, very amazing in the things that it does. And it forgives us for a lot. Mm. But you can only make certain mistakes. Yeah. And be forgiven for those. Your body will not forgive you for certain things. So always remember to take care of your body and take care of yourself now so you don't have to end up paying for that 20 years from now. Hmm. Definitely. That includes taking care of your mind. That in- includes taking care of your physical body. That includes taking care of your teeth. This is not a one-sided thing. And once you understand that perspective of things, that you, the decisions you make today are going to be paid for, whether or not it's eating those cakes, running those marathons, playing football, soccer, whatever it is. Those decisions are going to show back up. Definitely. Definitely. That's my takeaway. Hey, I got the, I got I got a diagnosis from a doctor, y'all. I'm out here. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's oh go. man, I'm so full right now. It's more where that came from. Well, Doctor Erica, I appreciate you so much. It's been my pleasure. I'm we, sure we'll speak again soon. Yes, we are gonna do more multiple episodes of this show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, once again, you can find her on Instagram, Dr. Erica Jones. Yes, yes. Also, at Fuck This Job. And that's the Instagram would let me use the U, so that's at F C K T H I S J O B. Yes. Uh, shout out to the Defy Life Network. Um, all love, all love to the Defy Life Network. Um, best man pod is your man Simba Roar back in his thing thing one more time, bruh. And we out.